February 29, 2000. John Price was on his way home from work, but he wasn't exactly ready to return home. His relationship with his girlfriend Catherine hasn't been going too well. Most of the time when the two weren't having sex, they were fighting. And these weren't little arguments about taking out the trash or paying the bills. More often than not, they would be violent. So violent, in fact, that earlier this month, Catherine took a butcher's knife and stabbed him in the chest. John was honestly scared of the woman. He once loved and even told co-workers that day, if he didn't return to work the next day, it would be because Catherine had murdered him. John then chuckled to himself as he was driving. Yes, she could be violent, and took a rather unhealthy interest and pleasure in her job as a butcher, slaughtering animals. But she would never actually hurt him, or his children. He smiled to himself, and started to look forward to coming home, and enjoying a nice drink. Even if he does see Catherine, and they do fight, it won't be any worse than the other times. But little did he know, he should have heeded his own warnings a bit more. As the next time anyone would see him, it would be on the kitchen table, served up on a platter for his children to eat. Hello, my name is Joseph Palmer, and today I wanted to talk about the murder of John Price, and how his murderer cooked his body and served him up to his very own children. Now without further ado, let's dive into the disturbing case of Catherine Knight. Catherine Mary Knight was born on October 24th, 1955 in Tenterfield, New South Wales, Australia. She was born and raised to an unconventional and dysfunctional family. Her mother, Barbara, had been married to Jack Rohan and lived with him in the small town of Aberdeen in New South Wales. They had four sons before Barbara began to have an affair with Ken Knight, a fellow friend and co-worker of her husband. When locals found out about the affair, they were of course angry and forced Barbara and Ken to move to Moore. None of their sons went with her. The two eldest boys continued to reside with their father, and the two younger sons were sent to be raised by an aunt in Sydney. Barbara had four additional children with Ken, including two girls born in 1955. Catherine Knight was one of them. In 1959, when Knight was four, Jack Rohan died, and his two older boys, who had been living with him, moved in with Barbara and Ken. Ken Knight was a violent and alcoholic who would rape Barbara up to ten times a day. Barbara, in turn, often told her daughters intimate details about her sex life and how much she hated sex with men. Later, when Catherine complained to her mother, that one of her partners wanted her to take part in a sex act she did not want to perform. Barbara told her to quote, put up with it and stop complaining. Her life continued to spiral and when she reached high school, her anger started to manifest. When she attended Musselbrook High School, Catherine became a loner and is remembered by classmates as a bully who stood over smaller children. She assaulted at least one boy at school with a weapon and was once injured by her teacher, who was found to have acted in self-defense. By contrast, when not in a rage, Knight was a model student and often earned awards for her good behavior. Upon leaving school at 15, without learning to read or write, she gained employment as a cutter in a clothing factory. Twelve months later, she left to start 
what she referred to as her dream job, cutting up ofo at the local arbiter. There, she was quickly promoted to boning, and was given her own set of butcher knives. At home, the knives were hung over her bed. Knight said her reason for doing this was, quote, "They would always be handy if I needed them." In 1973, Catherine met and fell in love with a fellow coworker named David Stanford Colette. Colette engaged in heavy drinking, which stemmed from two traumatic accidents from his previous railway job in Coffs Harbor. First, when his best friend was killed in front of him in a shunting accident, and later when he rescued injured occupants. Of a school bus in Kemsey, which had been struck by a train, killing six children, he eventually lost a job due to bad behavior and performance. But he soon got work at the nearby Aberdeen Arbiter, and became close friends with Knight's brother. Often, if Colette got into a fight, Knight would step in and back him up with her fist. In Aberdeen. She was well known for physically threatening anyone who upset her. Knight married Colette in 1974. The two arrived at the service on her motorcycle with a very drunk Colette. As soon as they arrived, Knight's mother Barbara gave Colette some advice that he should have listened to. Quote, "You better watch this one, or she'll fucking kill you." Stir her up in the wrong way, or do the wrong thing, and you're fucked. Don't ever think of playing up on her. She'll fucking kill you. Barbara wasn't wrong, as on their wedding night, Catherine tried to strangle Colette. The reason was for only having sex with her three times that night. It didn't get any better from there, as the two would constantly fight and argue. With Catherine on one day, cracking a frying pan over David's skull, Colette fled the house before collapsing in a neighbor's home. He was treated for a severely fractured skull. Police wanted to charge Knight, but she changed her behavior, persuading Colette to drop the charges. In May 1976, shortly after the birth of their first child, Melissa Ann. Colette left Knight for another woman, and moved to Queensland. Apparently unable to cope with the abuse, the next day Knight was seen pushing her own baby in a pram down Main Street, violently throwing the stroller from side to side. She was admitted to St Elmo's Hospital in Tamworth, where she was diagnosed with postnatal depression. And spent several weeks recovering. After being released, Knight placed two-month-old Melissa on a railway line shortly before the train was due. She then stole an axe, went into town, and threatened to kill several people. A homeless man, known in the district as Old Ted, who was foraging near the railway line, found and rescued the baby. By all accounts, only minutes before the train passed, Knight was arrested again and taken to Saint Elmo's Hospital. But apparently, she recovered and signed herself out the following day. Finally, Colette had enough, and the two separated. Luckily for David, they did, as Catherine expressed on numerous occasions, she had planned to kill him, and as we would find out. Her threat should be taken very seriously. In 1991, Catherine met a man by the name of John Chillingworth. Knight became pregnant by the 43-year-old, and gave birth the following year to a boy they named Eric. Their relationship lasted three years before she left him for a man she had been having an affair with for some time. The new man was on cloud nine. Catherine was fun, energetic, and loved being intimate. 
However, he would soon find out what the other men in Catherine's life eventually learned. But unfortunately for him, he would never get the chance to feel the relief the others did, as he would be known as the tragic victim of one of Australia's most brutal and stomach-turning crimes. Join me next week as we dive into the relationship with Catherine and John, and how their love would devolve into something truly evil. Thank you so much for watching, and look forward to seeing you next time.